the essential, the essential, sorry, I'm getting the, I ruined the mood because I had a screen come up. <laughs> of composting, but recycling our food scraps is more than just waste management. It's recognizing that sometimes the best solutions may not be glitzy technology, but the humility to harness the intelligence of nature. And I think that's really what I think. Uh, I think when you talk about recycling, or sometimes say organic recycling, people who get into composting really get an attachment to it. And I think it's because of our inherent um, connection to the soils and to the earth and to food. So I just opened with that one, uh, with this nice little piece and I'll turn it back over to Mary. I don't know, I think you might not be. Oh, well in that case, turn it back over to me. Um, no. Okay, hold on, it's not. Now the screen share's not working. Sorry, I have to do it this way. Here you go. Well, let me, well, real quickly, um, I think really what, really quickly you'll say, well, what is uh, composting and what is biodegradation? So I, I picked up a short video, which we worked with, with my company, uh, which this was done with uh, friends in Paris, in France. And basically um, composting biodegradation is something that the earth has done since the beginning of time. It's a balance between uh, the cycle, the circle of life. So I thought we'd do a quick, um, a quick video on what is biodegradation to sort of get us started because it's something the earth has done since the beginning of time and would continue doing until us smart smarty pants humans sort of got in the way. <laughs> so let's watch a quick video. Why is this not working? Uh, I'm really getting so frustrated over this. We went through this, I don't know how many times and it's something to do with being on. Watching a composting Zoom meeting. Maybe slideshow mode or something? No, I, I did it all uh, in slideshow mode and it worked just fine. Um, hyperlink, hyperlink, hyperlink. Um, sorry, I, I did this all in slideshow mode earlier, so. If you click slideshow mode now um, up at the top, would that help? Would that make a difference for you? Play current slide. I don't even get the thing. I don't understand. It was working fine. We went through this umpteen times. Well, there it's, it looks like it's got the uh, play button. Yeah. Um, okay, let's see if we can uh, figure out YouTube. Do you remember? I'll give it one more try. If not, I can just talk about it. It's okay. I don't, I don't remember what the YouTube is, so it's a really great one. Well, this is just good for the follow-up meeting then. So uh, real quick, what basically I'll talk about is, um, you know, uh, organic matter, and we're going to talk about composting, whether it be leaves, food scraps, or basically, um, you know, any kind of garden waste, basically will turn itself back into soil. But more than that, um, microbes in the soil will break it down and um, make it into a soil amendment, which helps plants to grow. Because underneath the soil, there's actually communities. Um, uh, these communities uh, will take, microbes will take uh, compost or organic material and will turn it into uh, CO2 and water and humus. And then microbes will eat the compost and gain um, release nutrients that the plants then can take up through their um, roots. And then of course, it also helps to sequester carbon because then the plants grow and they pull carbon like out of the atmosphere, which they use in photosynthesis, which then they die and go back into the soil. And then at that point, uh, the cycle continues. So this is something that's been happening since the, the beginning of time. Um, the earth would do it by itself um, um, until, like I said, we got in the way and said, well, we can do things differently. So when we get into talking about composting and using our resources, um, we started to think that basically food scraps in particular was garbage. And we started basically taking that and, and throwing them into trash when really I think what's changed and why composting is kind of popular now is it's not, it's a resource. And as a resource, um, we can take it out of the trash and put it back into the soil, which again, sequesters carbon, which feeds the soil, which feeds the plants, which basically gets into the circle of life. So um, then of course, the, 
the evolution of that would be what we call composting. So Mary, is that okay? Or we... That's it. That's okay. really, that, that's, that's the video in a nutshell. <laughs> so we'll go back to... If it comes up, we'll show it. <laughs> Mary, no, God, this is so frustrating. I'm really sorry. I don't know why this is happening to me. This is coming up with all these weird things. Here we go. So let's go back to here. We'll go to the next slide. Next slide, thank you. So what the heck is composting? Here we'll unpin Dan so you can see me. Well, maybe not me, whatever. Um, so what is composting? It's, it's basically the decomposition or rotting of organic matter. So, um, and if you look all around, if you happen to really notice, you can see that it's actually quite beautiful. Um, and you can see over here, this is a nurse log and there are trees growing out of this log that has fallen over and a new growth, new trees are gonna start coming out of it. And there's fungi and all sorts of beautiful things happening. So when you walk outside and look around, as Dan said, mother nature and the, and the, the planet have been doing this circle of like life or recycling all the time. I think it's really lovely to really take notice of it. And um, a lot of people ask, ask uh, you know, how can I do compost the wrong way? How can I do it the right way? And really, you really can't do it the wrong way. Nature will fix you up and they'll, she'll give you some really strong hints if you're not going to be doing it the right way. But compost is really just the acceleration of the rotting process. So, um, uh, usually when we compost at home, we're doing a compost process that requires air. So sometimes if you've been, been in a compost that uh, smells a little strong, shall we say, it's missing that air. So it's sort of like, you know, low tide or a, a mud pond. It can be a little pungent. So it's missing air. That's anaerobic um, composting. That can be pretty stinky. Um, sometimes the compost can be dry and that's pretty, pretty easy to see. So it just needs some moisture. And we're going to talk about, um, all of that as we go through. So if it smells bad, that means it's too wet. So you need to dry it out. You need to fluff it up. It's really all that simple. And if it's too dry, it's probably stopped composting. So you need to get it wet and you need to fluff it up. You need to mix that moisture around. And that's really, those are the two fixes. Those are really the problems. And what is soil? Um, oh, I really do like that nurse log. There it is again. Um, so soil is um, really the same thing as compost. It's all those microbes are eating up the, the organic matter in the compost. That's the same thing that's happening in good, healthy soil. Soil is a complex uh, mixture of all sorts of things. It's got minerals, it's got the water and the air and the organic matter and lots and lots and lots of living things. Soil is actually full of life. It's not, it's not dead. It's actually got tons of things. It's got, um, there's, I forget how many, but they say there's more soil organisms in a teaspoon of healthy soil than there are people on earth. So they're small, they're micro, microorganisms but it takes a long time to create soil. So that's where composting is so important to put and apply to your garden soil. So it helps to keep it going and rejuvenate it. That's why uh, compost is called sort of that, that special golden um, mixture to put onto your garden. Yeah, Mary, can I just say, this was one thing about compost and soil. Um, sometimes you'll hear compost being called a soil amendment. Um, but it does more than just put carbon in back in the soil for the plants. It also is uh, creates space for oxygen. It also creates space for water. It actually is good for um, uh, for holding water in soil and also good for uh, stopping flooding. So it does a whole bunch of really good stuff um, besides just giving carbon and nitrogen back to the soil. I move this little stinker out of the way here. Um, so the one thing that uh, Dan and I like to talk about is that although composting is great, what's even better is not to waste things. And um, so it's, um, it's a rethinking process. 
So um, we talk about, um, you know, waste management and all that stuff, but maybe it's better to think about um, things in terms of a resource and things in terms of a positive light. So just want to get people thinking along these same lines that we're trying to think. So waste is something that's useful that goes unused, whereas a resource is something that's useful and it as is being used to the highest level that, that it could be used. And I say it that way because there's a food recovery hierarchy that the EPA uh, puts out. And you can see this most preferred is at the top and least preferred is at the bottom. And as much as we love composting, it's the second to last one on this pyramid. So I really want um, to focus on this because instead of trying to compost as much as possible, let's compost as little as possible. <laughs> let's make sure that when we buy our food at the grocery store, we only buy as much as we need. But sometimes, you know, you go out to dinner when you don't mean to, or, you know, you aren't as hungry as you want to, so you have leftover food. So then, you know, make, make some soup or make some bread or, you know, make leftovers, but use that food up as much as you can. If you can't use all your food up, then give it to Op Hope or some other food kitchen or food uh, place that can use it. If you can't use it, then feed the animals. I happen to have one chicken left. I used to have more, or if you have a dog or a cat or something like that. I don't know of any industrial uses locally that we could do. And then get down to composting. So, um, we have one of these uh, magnets in our uh, refrigerator. And so my kids grew up having all sorts of like, okay, where does the food go? It goes to the dog, it goes to the kitchen, it goes to the, or it goes to the chicken, it goes to the compost, but um, it doesn't go right to the garbage can, that's for sure. And I think I could add one, there's one statistic I really like to add. And when you talk about food waste, um, it, it's pretty much agreed to that 40% of all food is wasted, which sounds bad, but when you layer it on top that 25% of children are undernourished or under, underfed, it really gives you a, a good idea of balance and uh, you know, not wasting food and thinking about you know, uh, those people who... Oh, sorry. Sorry, Dan, can you unmute yourself? Sorry, I was trying to meet the other one. Okay. Sorry. Um, yes, and actually, and what is the percentage in terms of our um, solid waste? Isn't it like 30, 35% is food waste? Yes, it's up to, if you go by weight, you can get up to up to 40% of our garbage is food scraps. Um, you know, there's charts, but you know, tomato is 85% water and celery and lettuce is about the same. So when you talk about, uh, what's recoverable resource in our garbage that we throw out um, is up to 25 to 40% is food waste, which could be composted, but hopefully not wasted at all. And since we're talking about garbage real quick, I can tell you since we compost and I take all that smelly food out of my trash, I, I've gone from plastic bags to paper bags for my trash. And I also don't have smells in my garage. And I only go to the transfer station maybe once every four or five weeks because I have my recycling trash out, which means I save a lot of money. So there's also a, a, an economic benefit to composting. <laughs> Even in the summer, right? Which can really, you know, it can be yes. very stinky if exactly. it, you don't compost. Exactly. So um, that's really helpful. And where's my cursor? There you go. And so one thing related to that uh, whole concept of reusing your food with, uh, there is this URL right here. So we'll just park here a little bit if you wanna write this down. Um, there's um, a webinar on, I guess that would be Wednesday um, that, or I'm sorry, I don't know what day, the 23rd, I don't even guess I'm so, I'm going to try to figure out what day is what, um, but this is through the EPA and it's going to um, give you examples and uh, demos on how to reduce your wasted food at home and give you tips and tools and all sorts of things. So um, if you type in all this information, um, it will give you how to register. Okay. So that's, oh, there it is Friday. It's right up there on my screen. Sorry. So now we can talk about composting, which is why you came. So there are three types of composting. There's 
the composting we do at home, which uses air. So that's aerobic composting. Then there's composting that doesn't use air and that's anaerobic composting. And then there's composting that you can do with worms, which is vermicomposting. Um, the composting that's anaerobic, you can do at home, but this is a picture of the quantum um, uh, the bio, uh, what's it called? Biopower. <laughs> Biopower in um, Southington. Yep. Where is that? Southington. And could you want to talk a little bit about how they do things? Because it's pretty exciting. They get, they sure. do a lot of stuff. Sure. Yeah. Anaerobic digest, you know, basically anaerobic is what we're going to do. And that's with air and that's outside. And that's when you see on farms like piles and things, but uh, I'm sorry, aerobic, but anaerobic is done without air. And basically what you do when you don't have air is you create methane which is a, uh, a pretty bad you know, global warming gas. But what happens is they collect it and then it's used to make energy. Um, so what they have had uh, really have kind of a state of, an, of the art uh, over a depackaging plant over at Quantum where actually they can take materials, um, leftover expired uh, food um, and they actually depackage it, take the food out, they wash it up and then they can recycle the, uh, the food scraps uh, by basically making um, methane and making energy and making uh, natural um, biogas. And then the digestate goes right to their composting. So then they have a full composting piece as well. So they truly can uh, do 100% uh, sustainable um, uh, use of food waste from industrial. So they recycle all the cans, uh, they go get washed and get recycled. The food scraps makes biogas and then the digestate goes into making a soil amendment. So they're really for here in our state of Connecticut, they have the European model, which really means that uh, nothing is wasted, which is kind of nice. Yeah, and we actually do that with our uh, water treatment facility. Um, we, they, they capture the methane by doing composting on site and that powers our water treatment facility, which is our, um, our biggest uh, fuel user. So uh, Fairfield's actually pretty progressive along those lines. Um, so we're gonna talk about aerobic composting, but um, I do wanna point out that vermicomposting is something that you, you in our neck of the woods, you would do indoors. Um, as long as you get your, your worms in a happy spot where you give them the right amount of food and give them enough airspace, they don't leave where you put them and they eat up your, your food and they make you wonderful, wonderful compost. So here we are to talk about aerobic composting. Um, so carbon and nitrogen sounds like a lot of complicated chemistry, but it's really not. Um, um, in the compost world, there's, there's browns and then there's greens. So the browns are the carbon and the greens are the nitrogen. The browns are the dry stuff. So the dried leaves. So I always think of it as browns are the dried leaves are the carbon. The greens are the grass, the grass clippings. They're very wet if you leave them out. They're all your food. All the food is your, your greens. They're very wet. So just to make life easy, what I do is I gather up uh, the leaves in the fall and I put them all in a pile or I put them in a garbage can by my compost bin. When I'm done with filling up my compost bin in my kitchen and I chop up uh, you know, all my you know, shredded my carrots, I've peeled my onions and my potatoes and I'm ready, I dump it into my compost bin. I take a handful, um, several handfuls of my leaves. I layered it on top and I'm done. And that also those leaves are also a biofilter. So if there's any stinkiness to my compost that I brought on out from my kitchen, it also creates enough of a, a filter so that it won't be uh, smelly and it won't be smelly for long anyway, but um, that's the easy layering technique that um, I employ. Um, and you can see down there on the bottom that the ratio of the browns to the greens is you want three times as many browns as you want to greens. And that's just by eyeballing, um, not terribly scientific. It's not how the people in a, a industrial compost facility would ever do it. They, they're much more precise. This is how you can do it at home. What do you say, Dan? What would you add to that? 
I would just say, you know, that if you want to think of it too, like, why do you need both? Well, if one is like the, your, your nitrogen or green stuff is like sugar and your uh, browns are kind of like protein. You know, if you were baking, makes baking a dinner for microbes um, and the one goes really quick, but they work together to really get the, uh, the microbes munching away. So that's why it's good to have a good ratio. And as Mary said that if you were selling compost um, and it had to be to a certain level, you know, for retail, um, you would really be specific on your, your recipe. But most people really just use food scraps, garden clippings and leaves for their brown. And for that, you really just have to do a ratio that's uh, by eyeball, you know, three handfuls to one, three buckets to one of, of leaves to uh, food scraps. And you can really eyeball it. I do mine in layering as well. You know, I, I do mine in batch style. We could talk about that when we get to actually like how to build a pile. But, um, you know, I've, I've done it all the, um, I won't say wrong ways, but I've learned the unconventional ways because I was just curious to try uh, different things and different things that you can compost. So I'm happy to share that. But if you just follow this, you'll do a lot better than I did starting out. Um, and then I just have a few tips that um, have worked. Again, we, we live and learn. These are the things that I've learned. I've, I've gotten fruit flies, that's for sure. Um, if you freeze your banana peels, you won't get them. If you don't, I can almost guarantee that you will. <clears throat> um, and in fact, if you freeze all your fruits and veggies, the thawing process so degradates the, um, the structural uh, integrity of the, the fruits and veggies that they will break down very quickly. So that's one way you can really accelerate your composting. But it also means that um, because they're frozen, when they thaw, they will be really, they will make your compost pile very mushy. So you've got to be ready for more dry material. Aerobic and vermicomposting are done with um, a lot of microbes chomping. They chomp from the outside edges. So um, you want to be cutting up, the more you cut up the, your pieces into smaller and smaller pieces, the faster. That's another way to accelerate. The faster um, it will compost with smaller pieces. Um, if you're going if you're composting at home, which you are, then you don't want to compost these things. You don't want to compost meat, fish, dairy, fats, because, um, your compost pile will not get hot enough to ensure that you will, um, be able to kill the pathogens, the, the dangerous uh, bacteria that you can get with those. It's not a guarantee that you'll get them, but if, if it's a possibility, then you want to stay away from those. So um, the meat and the, it's the meats that you want to worry about. The dairy and the fats just are harder to break down. So those are the issues. Citrus, yeah. not also, really a problem, but. Also animals love, animals love the dairy. They love the human food. So if you want to, you know, keep the varmints at bay. Um, the only time my composter ever got attacked is when um, I put leftover uh, chocolate mousse cake in there and I didn't cover it enough. And uh, <laughs> I had to fight the squirrels off, but that was my fault. <laughs> I should have eaten the cake. That was my fault. <laughs> there you go. That was the problem. That was a real shame. That was the problem. Um, so, so oh, really what you're doing is if you think about it, you're, you're feeding those microbes, right? So just like your kitty cat or your dog, or even yourself, the, they, every, every living organism needs water. They need oxygen. They need a place to live. They need the right food. So you're micro far, microbe farming. So just make sure that they have all the right amount of food, the water, the air, and, um, and you need to be able to ensure that they get enough air. So when you're doing that layering technique, um, eventually the stuff on the bottom does get compacted. So there are special tools um, that you can get to, to um, oh, here we go. I'm so sorry if this won't work, um, to uh, be able to fluff. Do um, you want to explain this one or we can see how so, the old workers. Uh... Well, I'm going to stop sharing and we, we can talk about um, the different types of tools while I find okay. it online. Okay. Do you want to talk about your, what you use as a tool for? Yes. Now, what I, have a, um, I have a black standalone composting bin, which we had as our um, discounted 
tools last time. So basically, um, what I do is uh, I build a pile and I start out with my, I have my pitchfork and I have an aerating tool, which you can buy. Yeah. Stop. Okay, I you have know, it. Uh, you know, okay. <laughs> So we don't have to play it. We just had to, to get it. Right. Well, I'll, I'll quickly go through what I do. So um, I started following the directions on how to do it. And I soon realized that you can't get a pitchfork into an opening that's like this big. Um, and I, I, I did a webinar for the Canadian Compost Council. And as a gift, they gave me a very nice book that was written in Canada. And it just turns out that they had my composter as one of their references. So I kind of learned that... Um, I, I build my pile, I let it sit and I aerate it. I bought one of the tools um, that you can buy. It's basically like a big auger screw and you just pull up your pile and then I would turn it. So I would turn it maybe if I was good once every two weeks, but sometimes I let it set and, and it still worked. Um, but you definitely want a pitchfork, you want a hoe. If you want to really feel like you know what you're doing, go out and buy some nice L.L. Bean dairy boots, the black ones. <laughs> just because you feel cool wearing them. And you, when you step around in the uh, compost, it does, it does stick to the bottom of your boots and it's nice to, uh, to hose it off. But really that and, um, and then watering. So I guess we'll get into like how to build a pile after. I think what this video was, um, of course, yeah. well, yeah, I'll just say that this, this as an introduction, um, I also do a lot of work in Milan with um, where our company's headquarters is. And there they have a very sophisticated composting food scrap collection. So I thought I would show Milan has the, uh, is actually the model for the rest of the world and how to collect food scraps and compost. But home composting is really the gateway to how to get started. So I thought I would just do a quick video to show um, how it's done in Milan. And then we can talk about it. I don't know if anyone could hear. I couldn't hear you, Dan. Did anyone else hear Dan when he was talking over the video? No. Maybe talk what you were saying, what you're saying. Okay. Sorry. The uh, Real quick, I'll just say that, you know, the reason I share this is because um, it's great to see a city like Milan or New York or San Francisco that has an infrastructure for 
comp municipal composting uh, where there's curbside pickup and everybody composts. Um, uh, basically in Milan, they have 85% of their people participate. Uh, there you saw a lot of the bags that they were using, but they weren't plastic bags because they only allow compostable bags uh, in the grocery stores for um, shopping bags and for produce bags, but then the people use those for the food scrap collections. So um, they've got about 85% participation. They only have about a 5% contamination and that's putting plastics and things in. So they are the model. Um, we I've taken cities from across the US to Milan to tour and to look at how they do it and hopefully come back with some inspiration. However, home composting is where it starts. And just because our state, our city, uh, our, our neighborhood doesn't do a municipal composting, there are some folks, there are subscription services that will pick up your, your bags of compost. However, I think it's much more fun to just do your home composting. And really it's just, uh, it's a learning process and should be a lot of fun. So um, we saw how the state of the art is. So I think we should probably talk about what can you and I do here in, in Fairfield without such a grandiose um, food scrap collection scheme. Uh, what just happened here? Um, so I'll go back to sharing if I can figure this out. <laughs> okay, so share. So um, this is the program that Dan and I went through. Ah, sorry. It's called the Master Composter Program. They already had their 2021 um, class, I guess you call it. So if you are interested, this is the, the website you'd go to, but if you just were to look up Yukon Master Composter, um, that's how you'd find it. Um, so this year, of course, was virtual, but normally they have it in person and they, they uh, travel around the state. Um, yeah, and there's a whole slew of resources. There's a lot of brochures, uh, I should say, um, fact, fact sheets. sheets. <laughs> that uh, I, I usually, when we do this live, like we did a library, we have a whole table with all the fact sheets, which are really a step-by-step -step on how to compost or how to build a compost bin or et cetera and so forth. Um, I, for years, had this grandiose plan of building this three-bay composting bin with et cetera and so forth. So, of course, the result of that is that I never did anything. I just had a pile. So um, if you're a lazy composter like me, um, you can buy a, a compost bin uh, and get started. Uh, and then, of course, as you get a little more confidence or just have more time, you can progress from there. Um, but I, I love the Master Composter Program. Uh, we support it with our as our company. Um, I think it's the best deal in Connecticut if you're interested in this stuff. And they're online now. Um, it gives you a good overview. And, uh, and, and if you don't compost after that, you can really fake it by using all the right words. So it's worth that for the price. Of <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm not supposed to say that. And, and since your company is underwriting this wonderful offer, why don't you um, talk about this a little bit? Well, here's just, uh, we, you know, we really want to get people to start diverting their food scraps. So what we're doing for, uh, of course, you can make your own bin. Um, and there's plenty of guidelines, fact sheets on how to do that. Um, but there's also something which I said, you can buy a composter, which is a good way to get started. So we're having a discount on this rotor, uh, rotary composter, which basically you put leaves in one side, you put food scrap in the other. And the main thing is you can spin it, which is the aerating. Basically, when I was talking about getting in with my pitchfork and um, all this, this will just really do it. So we're doing as part of for folks who are in here, we're doing a discount program uh, to get these and you can order them online through this link. Yeah. So um, if you're interested, if you go to oh, keep trying to find a place to put this thing, if you go down here, it's um, Fairfield. Oh, this link is wrong. And Becky's Okay, I have to tell her that. It's actually the town website is fairfieldct.org. There's a mistake down here on the bottom. So it's fairfieldct.org backslash SFTF for Sustainable Fairfield Task Force. And um, uh, I'll make it, I'll try and find a way to make it a little easier, but under files and documents is our flyer. Um, we'll be at the shop and stroll um, 
uh, two to six for sure. We're still having a little problem with our, our uh, volunteers. And we'll also be at the Y from 10 to one. Um, so we'll have flyers with the information as well. And, um, but the information on how to get the bin will be on the town website. And um, so we'll be sure to make, be, make that available to you. Um, and I think really, um, so you actually put your wor your food and your um, browns in the same area. That's the whole point. You want your browns and your greens together. And the rotation is what is fluffing. So instead of having to get your pitchfork in, you, you turn it. Um, so you're, you're tumbling it. So instead of having to go in there and try and put something inside of it, you just flip it. So I have something similar to this at home. I have one of these and then I have a square thing. This, this bin that's in the picture is one of those three uh, tiered bins that, that there's, there's gonna be three like this. That's a pretty standard issue one. Um, in the slide that we had seen, there was chicken wire. That's another standard kind of bin that you could just get chicken wire, make it into a circle. And the reason you want chicken wire or you want this bin that has these slots, it's because you want air. So you don't want something that's going to be airtight. Um, these these things here, these these are holes, right? They are letting air in. So air is important because your microbes need to breathe, right? Just like you. So you need air. You need moisture. You need you need um, a shelter. It's your it's just an, they're animals. They're little teeny weeny micro animals, but they're just the same thing. So you're just trying to make it a nice safe place for them to live. Make it comfy. As long as they get it the way they want it, they're going to make you wonderful compost. And the one thing about vermicomposting that I didn't say when we were on that topic is vermicompost is actually compost that's even better. It's actually got special hormones in it that are uh, they've actually been able to isolate and scientifically have proven um, to be uh, better for your plants. So if you couldn't, some people really get icked out by the kind idea of having worms, uh, you know, actually, you know, proactively having worms in their home, which I do. So if you come to my house, you'll, <laughs> I have worms in my basement. Um, but they, um, they actually produce, uh, hormones, um, that are better for plants than they've, they've never found it in anything else. It's really amazing. Um, so compost is really better than any chemical that we can derive through, um, I mean, I don't know if I didn't really even realize this, but, but the chemicals that we use from synthetics or that we make are from oil, they're petrochemicals. So um, of course they're not gonna be good for our, our plants and our, our lawn care. So we really, uh, we need to go back to be using compost. Um, so um, I don't know if we wanna open it up to questions or if there's been any questions in the chat or I don't know how you'd normally run the, the uh, webinars, Mary, if you, you've heard from anyone. Yeah, I mean, if we if, if people have questions, they can do uh, either or. If you want to um, unmute yourself and ask a question or type it in the chat. And I also wanted to say, uh, Mary and Dan, if there's any type of documents or uh, links or things that you want to send to me, and then I can pass them out, uh, pass them along to anyone who registered for the program as well. Um, okay helpful. I can, I can I'll do that. There's, there's really the, I will get the link. I really love the library of uh, fact sheets at a master composter. Um, mm -hmm. but there's also tons of videos. Uh, City of Seattle has a great calculator for doing carbon nitrogen uh, recipes. And there's just a ton of, and there's a couple of books that I really like that are easy to read. So maybe I'll get those too. Um, and I should have had them with me, but I, I recommend they're easy reads and they, they're good. So I'll get that stuff to you for follow-up. Okay, that would be great. And then like I said, I can. So if, if anyone has any questions, um, like I said, feel free to unmute yourself or, okay. Jay Moody, raising your hand. Yes, hi. Thank you both for um, all this information. I have just a one chamber tumbler at home. Um, so, it's, you know, I don't, I'm not able to separate my browns and my greens. So, you know, with that, um, you know, how often should I change it out as well as when you have a small tumbler like that, 
how often do you need to, you know, remove the, um, remove the soil and start again, or do you just continue building it up? Well, well, I think it was a mistake to say that you put the browns and the greens separately. You need you need to compost browns and greens together. So that they was go, they go together. What I meant is you can put a, a group in the side and a group on the other side, and then they, they mix together in there as opposed to okay. mixing. But truly, is you should do it correctly. You should shred your materials and shake them up in a bucket and then put them in. I mean, that's just good composting. Mm -hmm. So I was a little casual in my comments there. Um, and then someone asks, how do you know when the compost is ready to use? Um, well, compost um, smells wonderful and it doesn't smell like uh, food. It smells like rich soil. So for me, it's a, it's a visceral sort of, and I have a terrible sense of smell. So my fam family would be laughing right now, but um, it's a real spring uh, after, after a spring rain, it smells like soil. Um, it looks like soil. And um, if it's not ready, it's, it we come ready. I mean, it's, I don't know. I'm not, I'm a kind of like a, just try it out kind of person. And I think that's the problem when people try and do composting, they think it has to be the right way. And I, I work very hard at being very much like, just try it. Um, Cause really compost happens. It happens whether you do it or you don't do it, or if you've never heard of it, if you look out your window, there's compost happening right now. If you've never heard of the word compost, it was still going on before we ever thought of it. So give it a shot, try it out. Um, but I, compost I, is going on. I think what I like to do too, is there's a, a couple of stages of composting. And the first one is basically when um, your food and leaves aren't recognizable. You know, when you look in there and you see, you really don't recognize there's food scraps, everything's broken down. Um, then, uh, what I do, the tumblers and stuff are great because they protect you from rodents and things like that. Then you could take them out and I make it a separate pile for, um, I just collect that and I put fresh in. I put new stuff because I run out of space in my composter. So that's, if you were doing more industrial side, it'd be the maturing stage, but there's still composting and when it's cool like that and so, you know, worms and stuff will get in there. So you can grab some and just put it in your soil as an amendment, or you can start building a little finished compost pile of stuff that comes out of your tumbler. Um, it will be safe. Um, that's the three bin system, but you can also make yourself a little pile in or in a bucket, which I have three, actually I have three bins that I have my finished compost in, which is just sitting there to be used in the spring. And, um, um, so you could do that as well. And there's no rush, there's no rush, but there's no toxicity either. Right. And the reason behind the three bin, I should explain because that's as, uh, important. You put, you start in one bin and then when that gets filled up, compost is, um, it will magically start going down because the, as the critters are eating, as the microbes are eating it, it, uh, the, they decrease the size, the mass of the, the process. Okay. So that's one thing, but then it gets filled up and then eventually you want to be able to use the compost. So you leave that one alone and you start another bin and then you fill that one up and then you start the third bin. And the logic is by the time you're starting the third bin, the first bin is completed compost. So does that make sense to everyone? So for me, it usually takes a full year for, to get a complete compost. So by the time I'm done, with uh, like I have a two bin tumbler. And um, so by the time I'm finished with filling up my second bin, that's how big these bins are. Uh, my first bin is ready to be used in the garden. And what's nice about a tumbler is I can turn it so that then I turn it upside down with the door open and I have my wheelbarrow underneath and it just comes right out. So that's another nice thing about the tumbler is I don't have to get in there and try and wrench my back to dig it out. I like, I really like the tumblers a lot personally. So that's why we picked that one this time around. Last time we picked a, a bin that was a, a square bin, but then people had to figure out how to turn it. So, and someone asks uh, what constitutes brown or carbon? So other things are paper, wood, wood chips, sawdust. Um, um, what else, Dan, you can get, uh -huh. Pa shredded paper can ball up. So then that, then it becomes just a, a big mass. So then you have to be sure to uh, break those apart. 
I think wood chips, if you get wood chips, I mean, yeah. you might have to run them through twice, but wood chips actually, wood chips are really high carbon. So you put less than, than you put in leaves. Um, it's a high carbon ratio, uh, nitrogen ratio. So, um, good but, for airspace too. Yeah, uh, so wood chips are good for airspace. Um, some people put sticks and things in and uh, I don't. Mary does, she swears by it, but I found that when I put sticks in my compost, I just end up taking them all out when I screen. So, but I aerate as well with the tool, so it works. So it's really, you find your own way. Um, but I had a stump, I had a tree stump. And so uh, I actually started chipping some of that rotten wood out. I said, well, let me try that. I put it in and it worked fine. Although I think there were some termites and stuff in there. So I think that helped, but it didn't really matter. I can tell you that I've tried, um, um, I did put the um, vacuum cleaner dust in it, which kind of matted in COVID. My son had very long hair, so I got the dog clippers out and I shaved him, you know, basically. Dog so I, I had a big ball of hair because they said, well, you can compost hair. So I said, oh, well, I'll give it a try. So I threw Heavy that protein. in there. Yeah. And yeah, it was there for a good while and kind of looked kind of gross, like it was a some kind of murder scene. So I don't know if I do that again. <laughs> but then I had, um, what else? Uh, you know, so I've tried a lot in paper and uh, eggshell cartons are really good. They go, or the packing material that you get, the brown kind of cardboard, uh, like eggshells, that composts really well. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Oh, one thing I did try too, is I thought I'd try some uh, um, ashes from the fireplace, which people say, oh, you can't do that. Then I said, someone says, well, you can if you sprinkle it. So I did. And I found that it really kind of choked my pile because oh. it just, it just, kind of wadded up into a ball and so uh oh, that was a, that. that's good for potash that's good but don't yeah. use barbecue um uh ashes because you don't know it unless it just it's better not if you use wood for your barbecue but don't use uh, charcoal briquette ash because you don't know what they treated like, with. Uh, i know people have used lint from uh, sweaters and stuff like that and so um, you if, if you, if you wear all cotton, if you have any polyester, it won't, it won't be natural. So it won't break down. So, but the um, nice graph thing of things, yes, is, is green. You can use that. You want, you want greens Remember, What's the, what's the ratio? Everybody remember three, two, and what's the three, the three is what brown. There you go. There you go. Brown and carbon. And grasses, if you want to do a nitrogen charge, you can put some grass clippings in, but composting grass clippings, are, they're good to stay on your grass. But if you want to do a charge, you really have to sprinkle them because they'll clump up and make a brick as well. So, but yeah. this is fun. This is the fun part of figuring it all out. I mean, you know, it's uh, gives us something to talk about, right? Yeah, best to keep your grass clippings on. It's, it's, a, it's a natural fertilizer. So you're, you're putting the nitrogen from your grass clippings right back onto your grass. So why, why would you take it away? you know um so yeah what else were we going to talk about so i'm um, yeah in terms of a compost bin there is no wrong way i've just tug a hole in the ground and and stuff stuff in there so uh you don't even have to buy anything if you don't want to um i live net back i back up to the connecticut audubon and i get critters already but i've never had anybody come and um bother my compost not even my dogs um, and I, I do put eggs and or eggshells, um, which is a good source of calcium. Remember, soil is up a lot of minerals. So um, you do, you know, you start to get a little nerdy about all this stuff after a while. Um, and can I do a quick in our last minutes? Because I think when we did some of the library tours, I felt a little guilty. We really didn't do a hands on. And this is even worse because we don't even have stuff to show to demonstrate. Yeah. But this is my quick way to build a pile, which I think if you want to get started and you want to just sort of get it going, and this is in some of the literature as well, but first get yourself a leaf pile, start getting yourself a pile of leaves, which you could probably still get some from under some trees or something from the fall, because you're going to want to do three to one to food scraps and then do the layer technique. So what I would do is I would put maybe some of my wood chips or sticks on the bottom next to the ground for a little air. Um, then put a layer of leaves and then I would put, and then collect your food scraps. Start by collecting your food scraps. Try to get a good, a bucket full so you have some mass of that. Then lay your food scraps on top of that. Um, then what I do is because I have compost, I take some of the compost, I put that on top of the food scraps and then I take my watering can and I water the whole layer. I just water, 
sprinkle the whole thing with water. And then I continue. Leaves, food scraps, I put a little comp. The reason I do this is to bury it so it doesn't smell, so animals won't go after it. But this will get you started. And, and like I said, if you just left it alone, it would you could make compost. But then if you can go in and aerate it and just poke it around and get some air in it. And then um, uh, either you can just add as you go, add a little, dig it into the middle, put some food scraps in there, put some leaves, cover it over, or you can just wait and turn the whole pile, which I do too. I lift off the whole thing and I just flip the whole pile and add new and take out the old, uh, that, the, the, I shouldn't say the old, this stuff that's ready. So um, you wanna try to make yourself a pile. If you can work up to like a three by three pile, then that will give you some mass to get some heat going. Um, so anyway, that was real quick, but I'll also make the offer here that since we have uh, 30 some people, if you do composting and you need someone to come over and give you moral support, just connect with me. I'm happy to run around Fairfield. And uh, um, <laughs> if nothing else, I'll cheer. I'll be a cheerleader, but because um, I know it's hard to really do hands-on in a, in a presentation format like this. Is that okay? Mary. <laughs> yeah, I'm just putting in um, the, the email again for the task force so that they can get a hold of us in the chat. So in case it's just sustainable Fairfield task force, it's really long, but um, shouldn't be hard to remember. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, you can get either one of us through that one. And we're happy to answer any questions that you don't think of right now, you're always welcome to uh, get in touch. And the task force has monthly um, meetings and we have a subcommittee about food and waste and we talk about composting. So there'll be hopefully more going on in Fairfield about composting food waste in general, regard, you know, on a, on a more, uh, industrial scale, I guess you'd call it, you know, hopefully getting composting in the schools, composting at the curbside, composting like we saw in Milan, you know, so, uh, you know, we'll see what will happen, but we'll have to build up to that. But first we'll do it at home. And then I'll, I'll give my little bit of composting, be a little bit of a rebel because um, um, it's great to see, uh, think, oh, well, the state should do this and we should do this. But really, it, it really is start just in your backyard. And then the evolution is then you can do a neighborhood composting and get a few people together. Um, and then we can have like, we're doing a couple sections nearby a community composting, which is really becomes a nice social event. Um, then you can get into a drop-off program with a hauler that goes to a composter. Um, and then you get the curbside, but really it's, it's, uh, it's empowering to sort of just do it on your own and say, hey, I'm doing something environmental that really is sequestering carbon, um, that's making a soil amendment um, and making your trash a little less smelly. So that's my only words to get started. And I put the link, I put the uh, correct URL for the task force uh, part of the town website. You wanna go to look for files and documents and under that there'll be compost info and there'll be a couple of different options, but I think it's the second one down is the 25%, uh, so I'll say 2021, 20, 25% off offer. <clears throat> um, we don't make it easy for you, <laughs> but I'll see if I can get the town to make something that you know has it right there as a hot link somewhere. Um, the town website's kind of a bear, um, uh, but anyway. Um, where is the program? Uh, this is Joyce. Where is the program you talked about? You were going to be someplace. No, oh, the EPA what, uh, thing for um, on the, the on YMCA, Friday. You said the YMCA was one. Oh, oh, at the Healthy Kids Day. There's yeah for Earth Day. We're we we've been partnering with the YMCA, so that's Saturday. Okay. Um, ten to one. <clears throat> we're also going to have an EV car show. Um, it's very family friendly. So if you know any kids, they're going to be having um, lots of kids stuff. There. That's the Y. Okay. That, that's that's at the Y on the Old Post Road. Okay, great. Thank you. And then the stroll, shop and stroll. Everybody know about the shop and stroll that's um, tomorrow? It's, it's, it's uh, 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. If you can only imagine. We're not going to be there the whole time, but we'll be at Sherman Green 2 to 6. So we'll have a... a, a 
uh, lots of flyers and we'll have the information there. Oh, Nancy has her hand up. You gonna unmute Nancy? Nancy Cher, do you want to unmute? To ask? Okay, unmute, okay. Hi, um, I just brand new to composting and everything sounds really good and I'd like to try it. What do you do in the winter? Well, that's where vermicomposting happens all the time because that's, you will have them indoors because you know, those little guys would freeze outside. So you could do that or you can continue. It will slow down. Um, or you can go with a curbside pickup service. Um, I've always composted. I've always kept putting it on, putting it outside. The, the, the reason you, you want to kind of like use your compost in the spring and then that way start your pile up <clears throat> again, by the time you are at your winter, your pile's pretty big and the bigger okay. the pile, the hotter it gets. So those critters are moving around, really they're small. They're moving around so fast that kinetic energy is causing heat. So even in the winter, your pile can actually be steaming. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of funky. It's a lot of new stuff happening before your very eyes. You learn a lot when you compost all these. I, I kept all of mine. I collected, basically collected all my food scraps and I just kept putting them in. I have like a little, like a, a metal bucket. And I just started collecting them. And I even have my Christmas decorations. I do a lot of wreaths and, uh, and things like that with fruit, you know, sort of the, the Southern Williamsburg style. And so uh -huh. I had all those apples and I had a pineapple and I had all of that. And I just, we had one warm day and I opened up my pile and I put them all in there and they basically all went and I didn't chop them up or anything. So um, I, if you're sub-zero freezing, you know, but still um, the microbes, they're hardier than we are. So um, I wouldn't underestimate them, but you can all save stuff up too. Like I did. It's just, I didn't feel like going out when it was really cold. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Coffee grounds. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Good. This is fun. Thank you. Um, so I think we're just, someone was asking about that shop and stroll. I think it's actually Thursday. It's, um, it's a, the, I was, isn't it, is it Thursday the 22nd? Uh, I'm getting lost with days of the week and the date. I'm so bad at that. I'm really sorry. So it is the That's 22nd because we're co-sponsoring it because they're thick. And then, um, That's right. 424, 424, 10 a.m. And um, I know we haven't set a date or anything for this program yet, but I think folks uh, here might be interested. We had been talking about addressing um, the thing that you mentioned that kind of should be the, the first in all this is like reducing waste. Um, and I think if, if we, you know, have the program on like zero waste or cutting down on waste, um, you all might be interested in that. So that's, it's in the works. Um, so you can look forward to that. Um, from us. So um, if there are any more questions or Mary or Dan, you, you have any final composting words for everyone? I think it was, I forgot who just said it, but composting sh is fun. <laughs> so yeah. that's my final word. <laughs> I echo that. <laughs> well, I think what you said about, you know, sometimes when you, especially when you're starting out, you get so concerned about doing it the right way, but it sounds with this, it could almost be fun if you you know, you might discover something new <laughs> with uh, the combination of, of things that you use if you just kind of have that basic formula down. Oh, Karen, oh, or, oh that was an applause. That wasn't, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, so, that was very thank, sweet. <laughs> yeah, thank you everyone so much for being here uh, tonight. And uh, again, special thanks to Mary and Dan. Um, I really appreciate your time uh, and doing this virtually. Oh, and Mary Co, thank you so much for hosting and for the Fairfield Definitely. Library System and the Stratfield Branch for, for hosting us. Um, it's my pleasure. My pleasure, really. So thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Um, take care, and we'll see you next time. Yep. Bye. Bye. Bye.